Uh, sorry for the technical difficulties we're having this morning, but thank you for joining us and bearing with us as we figured that out. This is, of course, the technical recruiting webinar series presented by Recruiting Brief and Human Resources Today in partnership with DICE. I'm Shelley, the Site Manager of Human Resources Today and Recruiting Brief, and I'm excited to bring you six fresh voices in the space to bring you their hard-earned insight about technical recruiting. Before we go any further, I do want to thank DICE for sponsoring the webinar series and helping us to make this happen. If you haven't heard of DICE, they are a leading tech career hub connecting employers with skilled technology professionals. They provide a comprehensive suite of recruiting solutions, empowering companies and recruiters to make informed hiring decisions. To find out how you can access millions of skilled tech candidates and ultimately win your unfair share of elite tech talent, visit DICE at dice.com forward slash products. And the URL is up there on the screen. And as a special thank you for joining us on today's webinar, DICE are also offering their definitive guide to engage top tech candidates. All you have to do is go to dice.com forward slash engage to get your own free copy and start increasing your response rates today. So thanks again, DICE. All right, uh, by now I think most of you know the drill. And of course, we want you to ask questions during today's session. You can do this by submitting them into the question panel on the right side of your screen. And we'll try to answer as many of them as we can at the end of the presentation. The lovely Hannah will be acting as tech support today and she will be happy to answer any questions that you have. So feel free to say hello in the question box. Lastly, if you have any audio issues during today's presentation, you may wish to dial in by phone. You can do this by selecting the more button in the upper right portion of your screen and selecting the switch to phone option. All right, so today I'm talking to Susanna Fraser, the head of strategic sourcing at Universal Music and the founder of Sources Who Code. She's also the first ever two-time SourceCon hackathon champion. So Susanna, that's quite a resume. We're thrilled to have you on the show today. Oh, you're too kind, Shelly. Thank you so <laughs> much. I'm absolutely ecstatic about being here. And uh, happy Monday, everyone. Woo! <laughs> happy Monday. <laughs> yes. Um, so again, everyone, thank you so much for tuning in today. I know that we're kicking off the week, so hopefully this will be kicking it off on a good note. And as Shelly mentioned, my name is Susanna Frazier, and I'm actually a technical recruiter turned sourcer and recruitment marketer. Um, she, Shelly elaborated a bit about my background, but just to piggyback off that, I wanted to share that I've carved out a niche for building corporate sourcing functions from the ground up. I'm also an HR tech advisor and I'm currently consulting for two AI powered companies called Uncommon and Seekout. And additionally, I'm the founder of Sourcers Who Code, which is a collective learning community for innovative recruitment professionals. I encourage all of y'all to join us. And as far as any accolades go, I'm a certified recruiter, recruitment marketer, and educator. I've also been recognized as a top 100 recruiter. I'm both an international and keynote speaker. And as Shelly mentioned, I've won as well as hosted a few sourcing hackathons. And I'm actually the first and only two-time SourceCon hackathon champ. So there's that. And I guess that's me in a nutshell. Um, so when Shelly actually first approached me about this webinar, she pitched the title, How to Get Better Candidate Response Rates with Machine Learning and AI. Um, when we took a look at my background, we both geeked out a little bit about how well the topic aligned with who I am and what I do. I absolutely freaking love, love, love talking and learning about tools and technologies that can help optimize recruitment processes as well as I love the art and the science behind candidate engagement. Um, Shelly and I, in our initial discussion, we, we started to kind of pick the landscape and noticed that there have indeed been a lot of different webinars talking about AI and recruiting, but to my knowledge, none that have specifically focused on how AI can augment candidate engagement. So here's how I've structured today's discussion. After wrapping up this intro, we'll be diving into some overviews. We'll define AI and ML, which yes, will be a little bit nerdy, um, but hopefully we'll fly through that and then discuss some ways AI is already being used throughout our entire recruitment workflow. 
And then the bread and butter, we're gonna zone into candidate engagement strategies. Now, what I'm asking of you all is that this is an interactive webinar. I'm not on a soapbox just preaching. Um, so it'd be great to have some interaction throughout this. If you have questions, as Shelly mentioned, I'm actually not gonna wait until the end to respond. Um, I'd love to be able to respond in real time. And on that note, I'm also going to be crowdsourcing some Q&A from y'all. Um, so just to get off my soapbox now, let's, uh, let's get this nerd party started. So uh, that we all have the same frame of reference, let's kick things off by defining artificial intelligence. AI can be defined as a machine's ability to have human-like intelligence. AI is actually an overarching category with several more targeted terms under that heading. And one of those major categories is, yeah, you guessed it, it's machine learning. But others include deep learning and natural language processing, also known as NLP. Uh, these categories are not mutually exclusive as AI-enabled technology actually combines several of these different elements. So machine learning can be defined as a type of AI that provides a machine with the ability to learn from inference. And what that means is this is actually capable of learning without having to be programmed. So it works by the machine examining sets of data and using those patterns within the data to improve its own understanding. Pretty darn cool. But there's even a further subset of ML called deep learning. And deep learning, it has the ability to learn from unstructured data. So this is quite possibly the most critical aspect of AI, where machines actually begin truly creating artificial intelligence. And at its most basic level, deep learning can be thought of as a way to automate predictive analytics, which we'll talk about here in a bit. Now, last definition, natural language processing. This provides a machine with the ability to analyze, understand, and generate language. NLP algorithms are based on machine learning where interpretations can be made from data um, like spoken languages are. Context, tone, and structures within the data are interpreted by the computer. So instead of hand coding large sets of rules, NLP can rely on machine learning to automatically learn these rules by analyzing large sets of examples. Okay, that was a crazy amount of terminology. So here's just a brief summary of all that jumble. Um, AI is a broad field of study. ML is a particular subfield that concerns AI training algorithms, yada yada. NLP, another subfield of AI. ML used in NLP, blah, blah, blah. Ah, okay, you get it, enough of the definitions. Let's get to it. Long story short, AI is augmented intelligence. This technology helps relieve us of time-consuming, transactional, and mundane tasks. This creates absolutely unparalleled opportunities for us to draw out the full capacity and potential of our human spirit. So it's kind of paradox that artificial intelligence is actually helping us, in essence, become more human through our candidate outreach strategies. So as far as AI's application within recruitment, I wanna ask you all, how are you currently using AI throughout your workflows? What are some specific examples of the AI, AI powered technologies you're already using? And when and why do you use them? AI has obviously begun revolutionizing the talent space so that we can spend more time focused on recruiting strategy and candidate relationships. And paired with human intuition, AI can empower us to evaluate candidate quality, build automated talent pipelines, improve diversity hiring, eliminate unconscious bias, the list goes on and on. So as I said, I would love to hear how you guys are already using AI powered technologies. Are you even using them? Do you like them? When do you use them? Why do you use them? And then I already see here that people are mentioning chat bots. 
Um, which yes, that seems to be another buzzword these days. And some other examples, of course, are, are I see here we have interview management and scheduling, um, job marketing and distribution. Oh yeah, matching systems. That's actually, we're actually going to get into matching systems a bit. I'm glad to see that you guys are already using some of those. Um, but yeah, great responses. It seems like you guys are actually in alignment with the findings in LinkedIn's 2018 Global Recruiting Trends Report. Um, according to this report, some key areas of opportunity for AI to be the most helpful for recruiters consist of sourcing, screening, nurturing, scheduling, engaging and interviewing candidates. And there's no doubt we will benefit from AI augmenting these processes. This helps us save time and money while also delivering best candidate matches and removing human bias. Now, I actually clipped this next slide here um, from a recommended webinar that was put on by Smashfly. But what I really like about this is that it provides a visual overview of AI's different applications throughout the recruitment workflow, while also showcasing some relevant tools. But for the sake of the remainder of our time together, we're gonna be zoning in to that sourcing and engagement piece. So let's kind of power down, power up, and take a quick brain break from all this AI buzz. Let's get down to the nitty gritty about candidate response rates. I'm curious to hear from you guys, AI aside, what are some strategies y'all have used to power your candidate response rates? If anybody has any specific examples of say, um, a subject line that they've used and have gotten a really good reaction from, um, sharing is caring here. And yes, yes. Personalization, definitely a good strategy. Um, <laughs> that's kind of funny. Later on in the webinar, I'll, I'll show some examples of hashtag recruiter fails when it comes to personalization. So um, no, that's great that y'all mentioned that. Cool. Um, so to summarize your all's responses, we can increase our candidate response rates by strategically targeting relevant talent then taking the time to better understand who they are and what they do, and then optimally engaging them. Uh, this slide here in front of you provides an overview of some ways AI can be used throughout that targeting, understanding, and engaging process. So let's begin by understanding how to strategically target relevant talent and what that even means. So. Increasing candidate response rates begins with targeting the right talent, because obviously if you reach out to someone about an irrelevant job, chances are they won't respond. That being said, it's no surprise that sourcing candidates is considered a recruiter's most helpful AI technology. We spend a crazy amount of time combing through resumes and social profiles in order to connect with potential candidates. A best practice dictates that sourcing should begin within your ATS, but as you can see from the stats here, only 12 to 25 percent of a position's applicants are qualified, and screening resume takes 23 hours of time for a single position. And additionally, recruiters spend 13 hours per week sourcing for just a single role. That's screening resumes and sourcing. That's a huge chunk of time. So it's totally safe to say that having a tool that can augment that process is very, very valuable to us. Now, AI aside, here's a glimpse into how I've targeted relevant talent without the help of AI. Um, I've structured these slides here with my process on the left and then some typically free tools on the right-hand side that are not AI-based. So my process is that I begin by analyzing the team composition and gathering insights that help paint a picture of what might be considered target talent. Another buzzword for this is creating a candidate persona. Um, taking this information, 
I then create a Boolean search string which captures all of this information. There's a very helpful free tool to help craft Boolean strings called Source Hub. That's put on by Social Talent. I then use that Boolean string to search both internal and external platforms. The key here is that I save those searches by setting up free automated alerts on platforms like LinkedIn, Indeed, and Google. Now, that's kind of my way to automate my sourcing process via those alerts. But using AI technologies to augment this process helps in two key ways, position matching and automated sourcing. As far as position matching technology goes, there are several tools that integrate with your ATLs or excuse me, your ATS, to help rediscover talent. Similarly, there are tools that can integrate with your CRM to help discover talent. And there are also tools that can help you source on external platforms. And there are tools that do it all too. <laughs> so as far as my favorite talent rediscovery, discovery, and position magnet tools go, I'm gonna kick things off with Crowded. Crowded is an ATS integration that helps you rediscover talent. So many qualified candidates are already in our ATS, but the data is old and out of date, so you don't tap into this resource. I've, <laughs> during my research of recruiter fails, I stumbled across quite a few uh, recruiters that contacted individuals through their ATS but they were referencing all of their dated background information. So of course, those that target talent wasn't relevant. Um, but what Crowded does is it actually updates each candidate's information with the latest jobs, skills, locations, certifications, um, and educational data. And they pull that from numerous source, uh, sourcing using um, data sourcing and validation algorithms. But even cooler than keeping all of this information up to date, Crowded also matches and ranks and warms up target talent for you across all of your job openings just with one click. It's seriously like magic. Now, enough about Crowded. There's also a tool called Candidate ID, which is actually a CRM that helps you discover talent. Now this, um, this CRM is extremely unique because it uses something called an ID score to measure an individual's desire to work for your organization in real time. Now, what I mean by this is that candidate ID is keeping a pulse on how engaged talent is with your particular company by tracking an individual's activity across your website your career site, your social sites, and even any interactions they've made with direct marketing campaigns. It's pretty darn cool. Also kind of creepy, but just saying. Now the third position matching tool that I love more than life itself, seriously, this is my favorite tool out there today. Um, it's called Seekout. Now, Seekout has an interesting functionality called a position magnet. By entering in the company and the title of the role you want to fill, Seekout pulls the most appropriate talent profiles for the position to the top of the list. It actually ranks these candidates for you. These are the profiles who share the most characteristics with people already in that position magnet role. And if you click on a profile's magnet details, you'll see what parts of their background make them a good match for the target position. You can also enter in keywords or Boolean searches to narrow down your search results so that you're targeting exactly who you want. Um, another cool way to use this, I think, is that you can use the position magnet if you're trying to hire the type of people your competitor or another company hires simply by entering in their company name as opposed to yours. Um, so as far as automated sourcing goes, there are several tools that source behind the scenes for you. 
um, by discovering new talent that matches your inputs, like keywords pulled from your company's job descriptions or your saved searches. Now, my one favorite automated sourcing tool is Hire Tool. Hire Tool automates external sourcing by building a full profile on potential hires from across the web, making sure your top results are the best match as well. Their AI search works in a unique way because it actually will only return five initial results for you. And of those five, you either rate them a good match or not a fit. And after you've weighed in, Hire Tool then continuously retrieves new candidates that fit your search criteria and resemble those good fit candidates. So now that we've covered how to strategically target relevant talent, let's move on to how to better understand our talent. So just as in last time, here's a glimpse into how I've gone about better understanding talent without the help of AI. Yes, without the help of AI. So this is pretty labor intensive, but first I researched the job title and any target companies. Relink Goodwin Labs is my preferred free tool for job title research, and Payscale is my preferred free tool for company research. This information helps me better understand why my talent may be inclined to explore new opportunities. It also helps me market a relevant EVP, um, AKA employee value proposition, to help target my talent. So for example, if my target talent's current company is experiencing layoffs, I may highlight the stability that my company offers in my initial outreach. Similarly, if salaries at my target talent's current company are below market average, I may highlight our compensation benefits and perks. So two free tools I use to keep a pulse on companies are Owler and a company. Now, after I research my target talent's job title and company, I educate myself on any unknown tech terminology found either in my own job description or the profiles of my target talent. Glossary Tech is a free user-friendly tool to accomplish this. As tech recruiters, I encourage all of you all to put this in your own toolbox. Now, lastly, I find any associated social profiles using free extensions such as Connectifier, Signal Hire, and Amazing Hiring. Now, I picked these three tools today because of their ability to find associated social links directly from not just an individual's LinkedIn profile, but since this is geared towards tech recruiters, all of these tools work from GitHub profiles as well. And taking a peek at an individual's digital footprint helps me not only gauge their cultural fit within my organization, it also provides opportunities for more messaging like mentioning a mutual connection, group, or like, or even referring to a specific post that happened to catch my eye. But of course, there, there are AI technologies that can help us augment this process. And it accomplishes this in two key ways, predictive signals and social intelligence. As far as predictive signals go, there are several tools that help leverage predictive insights to identify talent that may be more likely for a new opportunity. Uh, some key areas that are analyzed are behavior and industry trends, like the target talent's professional background, career progression, and any events that have impacted their company or industry. And these signals are then able to identify talent that, yeah, you're reading that right, two times more likely to respond to recruiters, as well as 63% more likely to change jobs within the next three months. Now, two of my favorite predictive signals tools are Engaged Talent and Intello. These two are quite similar, uh, but Engaged Talent provides a comprehensive talent profile that includes experience, contact information, associated social sites, 
predictive availability scoring, company insights, and market comp compensation. A lot of information. Um, but it also has this engaged meter, which just makes it very easy, easy to visually understand if a target talent is more inclined to engage with you when you extend your outreach. Now, similarly, Intello provides in-depth insights into talent profiles by surfacing key data points that are not found on the traditional resume. Things like a candidate's career highlights and progression, uh, their likelihood of switching jobs. They also include data yielding their unique market value. And something very unique to this specific platform is that it gauges talent profiles company fit. Now, the second piece of this is social intelligence. Now, social intelligence might be a term that y'all have never heard because it's actually a gradually emerging field. And it's emerging as a key facilitator of change in the world of business. So what happens is social intelligence technology gathers data from social media platforms to better understand the users behind those social conversations. So we're able to analyze demographics, psychometrics, preferences, behavior, and content affinity to gather insights about individual personalities, moods, needs, and values of our target talent. So this is compelling to marketers to trade gut feelings with accurate data-driven insights to devise smarter strategies. There's two really cool social intelligent tools that I'm crazy about. Uh, known as Crystal Nose and Froley Deep Sense. Crystal Nose is a freemium tool and an extension that analyzes the personality of talent profiles directly from their profile. Yes, this works with major sites like LinkedIn. Um, Crystal Nose provides an overview of the individual's personality as well as their disk profile, but uniquely, Crystal Nose has the ability to compare personalities and recommend strategies accordingly. So this can be extremely useful when predicting cultural fit, how an individual may interact within the team. And of course, this is also useful information about how to best craft your outreach messaging to individuals. Now, this is the bee's knees social intelligence tool right here, guys. Froley Deep Sense. Holy cow. So Froley Deep Sense takes social intelligence to a whole nother level. By inputting an individual's phone number, email address, or their Twitter handle, you're able to aggregate so much information about them. Not only does this freemium tool provide an overview of an individual's personality, their disk profile and communication advice. It also details their behavioral attributes and top interest, which can be really, really useful when predicting cultural fit and personalizing our messaging. We're also given a glimpse into when they're most active on social media, which is very helpful when optimizing our outreach timing. And additionally, Frolly Deep Sense provides all associated social links to provide easy access for further exploring our target talent. As I said, this is a freemium tool. I highly encourage y'all to check this one out. So now that we've covered how to strategically target relevant talent, as well as how to better understand talent, we're gonna wrap things up with how to optimally engage talent. So it's important that you value the time and energy spent on targeting and understanding talent enough so that you actually engage your talent properly. That being said, we're gonna begin with three recruiter fail examples of how not to optimally engage talent. Number one here, yes, personalizing your messages by including the target talent's name is great but do your best not to fall victim to copy paste. Take the time to double check you've actually gotten their name right. I am totally guilty of this. 
Thankfully, I did not find one of my messages on recruiter fails, however. <laughs> Second example, uh, take the time to personalize your messages by including an overview of why the target talent is a good fit for your specific opportunity, but don't fall victim to spam. Actually take the time to double check that this is in fact a relevant alignment. And third here, yes, always follow up on your initial outreach. If you've taken the time and energy to source and understand talent. Don't just be a one and done messenger, but space out your timing and alternate your messages between platforms. Take the time to automate your drip campaigns in an optimal way. That's pretty ridiculous that he got three of those emails in such a, a short span. Um, hopefully he responded because it is quite lucrative. <laughs> Uh, so as before, here's a glimpse into how I've gone about optimally engaging talent without the help of AI. First, I cross-reference the social profiles of my target talent to gain a better understanding of their areas of interest and identify what they may consider to be an enticing EVP. In an upcoming slide, I'll be showing you guys some examples of EVPs. Um, but Two free tools I use to cross-reference the social interests of my target talent are Intelligence Search and Stalk Face. Yes, Stalk Face is probably as creepy as you might be envisioning it. Uh, these two tools, Intelligence Search as well as Stalk Face, um, give you a glimpse into your target talent's likes, group memberships, um, mutual connections, et cetera. This information is typically pulled from Facebook profiles, uh, but it does have additional functionality. So next, when I'm crafting my messaging, I make sure that I include a personalized subject line and my content is mobile friendly. So here's an alarming stat for y'all. Uh, the average office worker receives over 100 emails per day. And 33% of email recipients open their email based on subject line alone. Yeah, that's pretty alarming. So it's super duper important to nail your subject line. Uh, and guess what? There is a free site that helps you optimize this called subjectline.com. Now, in order to actually craft mobile optimized content, I actually use two tools. Uh, one of them is called Grammarly, which is an extension that is always on in my browser. And it's essentially a um, like a synonym and it's like a spell checker for my browser. However, there's another tool here called Hemingway Editor, and it helps make sure that my readability levels are on point with the target talent that I am targeting. Now, best practices include that you should always have a blatant call to action at the bottom of your message. And I like to take this a step further by also including an easy scheduling link. So if somebody wants to follow up and have a conversation with me, they can just go on ahead and book time directly on my calendar. And I use a free tool called Calendly to do this. Now, after I've taken the time to craft this amazing messaging, I then have to find an individual's contact information. At the bottom of this slide, you see three of my favorite email finding tools. Um, these are all free or freemium. And these three tools, Clearbit Connect, Hunter, and Nymeria, they both cross-reference contact information based on work email addresses, as well as personal email addresses and phone numbers. And if I do happen to find somebody's phone number, I also like to leverage text to recruit to, so that I'm not only calling an individual, but texting them as well. So now that you all have been walked through my process as to how I go about optimally engaging talent without AI, I want to share with you a few key slides it's really good information to keep in mind when optimizing your own engagement. 
So I had mentioned earlier that I'd be sharing with you some examples of EDP. These are actually these examples here are actually um, stack ranked based on what talent is more inclined to be interested in. So I think this is really valuable information because if I again if I'm cross referencing my target talents companies, I'm able to get a glimpse into what they might find most attractive. And that information I can then leverage when I'm messaging them. Additionally, I mentioned earlier that we really want to utilize various platforms to reach out to individuals. I found this pretty alarming um, that LinkedIn in mail is so widely used by individuals, whereas the talent that we're targeting isn't finding it um, isn't finding it effective. Now, something that is very effective is using the phone and text messages. Again, Text Recruit is a wonderful tool for helping with that. Moving along, optimizing your outreach times is seriously important. So not only is there a preferred time of the day where individuals are more than likely to respond to emails, there's also optimal times of the week in terms of weekend or weekdays. I believe this slide gives you a pretty good overview as to you know, the different times of the day, but two things that I wanna bring to your attention are these charts on the right-hand side where it says B2B normal and entrep entrepreneurs plus workaholics. Essentially, this is breaking down um, whether or not you want somebody that works a eight to five job, those are considered B2B normal folks, or if you want a workaholic where they're nonstop all the time. And depending on the candidate persona that you're targeting, if you're targeting, again, one of those more normal individuals, the best time of the week and the best time of the day to send your outreach is during the week, on Tuesday, actually, at 8 a.m. And on that note, those workaholics that really like to get after it, the best time to reach them is the weekend. Crazy thought. Um, you might not be working on the weekend, but you can automate your messaging to send on the weekends anyway, which is a really good trick to, again, increase your response rates. Now, two different tools that I utilize uh, when creating drip campaigns for my outreach is our Trendsly and Zen Sourcer. Trendsly is very unique because it is an extension that is capable of extending outreach to an individual from any website. So essentially, Trendsly hangs out in the bottom corner of my browser, and if I come across somebody that I want to extend outreach to, I just click on the icon, and then I'm able to set up an automated email drip campaign that automatically turns off when somebody responds. I also have access to a dashboard on a website that is evaluating how effectively my campaigns are running so that I can A, B, test them accordingly and tailor any messaging. Now, Zen Sourcer is very um, different than other drip marketing campaign tools because Zen Sourcer, get this guys, it integrates with mails. I have yet to find another email marketing tool that is capable of doing that. So not only can I email an individual, but I can also alternate my messages between in-mails and emails. Now, those two tools really stand out to me. Um, they both integrate with both Gmail as well as Outlook, and I found them extremely effective, um, but also complementing, complementing each other. So that was a whole lot of information, I know. Hopefully we got the nerdy part out of the way at the get-go and you guys didn't zone out after all the terminology. Um, but now is our time for Q&A and I would love to um, answer any questions that y'all may have or any feedback about tools that I shared, maybe some that you're already using um, or some new new tools that you already have, have experience with. Sharing is hearing. <laughs> We definitely do have a very engaged audience here today, Susanna, and uh, people are letting us know that they're already using a higher tool and um, Crystal Nose, apparently people love that one. So 
Yeah, okay. as uh, we do have uh, one person who's just wondering if you know of anything similar to Calendly. I do. Um, okay, so I actually have a slide that I can share with y'all. It's a tools to find tools <laughs> um, slide that has some really good resources for being able to um, discover tools on your own and also similar tools to those that you may already be using. Now, Calendly is my preferred tool um, based on it being a free service, but there are other tools that integrate with both Gmail and and Outlook, um, and I, I believe one is like 10, I'd, I'd totally be Googling this right now, um, but like 1080 might be the name of it. But again, if you all want to email me directly, I'll be sure to get that information over to you. Excellent, and uh, can you let us know your email address real fast, just so that we yeah, have that? of course. Uh, so I'm pretty consistently branded as O Susanna Marie across the board. So on that note, my email address, you can either catch me at osusannamarie at gmail.com or me, M-E, at osusannamarie.com. Brilliant. All hey. right. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, we have one of our listeners here, Michael, who is asking if you've ever used an ATS for your drip campaigns. You know, I've tried and I failed, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> how's that for the blatant truth? No, I, I've actually been a part of configuring ATSs um, and trying to, again, create different uh, talent pools and pipelines within those, within my ATS and creating drip campaigns accordingly. But I really haven't found that effective. So what um, I've done to overcome that is it's actually quite a, quite a wild process, but manually taking those individuals that I'm I'm contacting in my ATS and uploading them into Constant Contact, and then creating drip campaigns through that. Um, so it's a workaround, and that's that's why I much prefer um, you know in real time um, creating drip campaigns using the tools that I mentioned. That was a really good question, though. Awesome. And um, another listener, Tara, is wondering, what do you use to keep your own connections? Do you use a CRM? I do not. I should be. Um, no, my own connections, I actually use full contact in my own phone and or on my own phone and my computer. And I integrate all of my different email addresses into that one dispensary um, so that I'm able to able to keep up with who's who. And then kind of like those search alerts that I mentioned earlier, I'm able to identify individuals that I want to keep a pulse on more so than others. And I can get email updates based on their social activity. And I believe the tool that I'm using for that right now is Refind. Um, but again, I'd be happy to share that later. Cool. Um, just out of curiosity, what is your opinion on CRMs in general? Because of course, when you see those emails go out where there's three identical emails in one hour, yeah, that was really a CRM. <laughs> <laughs> right. Um, no, I am a I'm a huge fan of CRMs. Actually, I feel like they're they're very beneficial when it comes to managing, you know, who people are and keeping a pulse on. Um, providing them with relevant information and making sure that you don't lose track of individuals. Um, so if I had the budget for them, I would certainly implement them to be quite frank with you. And two that I really, that stand out to me that I would like to look into further are both candidate ID, Beamery and Smashfly is one as well. But a lot of those, they, they also um, try to take over your employer branding for you. And that's not, something that I'm interested in at this point in time. So again, if budget allows, I'll start to investigate those a bit further. I have to say it's fantastically refreshing to have one of our speakers just be so blatantly honest, like, yes, I love it, but no, I can't afford it. <laughs> yeah, um, that's, again, I, I'm a huge fan of free tools and premium tools. And something that I'm an extremely big advocate for is I have always invested in my own tools and not been dependent of companies providing them for me. Um, Cause to be honest, if I, if I am to spend, you know, X amount of money on a tool that is going to help improve my work and quality of work, then guess what? That, that accounts for me getting a raise later on or being able to ask for more money in my next role and really helps facilitate my own pr career progression. 
Plus, if it's a commission-based role, you know, all those tools end up paying for themselves. <laughs> <laughs> now, one of our listeners is observing that portability is key. I guess that's very true for yeah. the recruiting profession. Yes, very good point. <laughs> All right. So we have another question that's come in. Um, this one's from Paul. He wants to know, what do you think of offering referral bonuses to candidates who don't seem to be interested? Heck yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do I think? I think that that is like, I mean, referrals are the number one source of quality hire. So of course, um, you know, scratch the back that scratches yours. Referral bonuses, um, they pay for themselves. <laughs> Very nice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. Uh, early on in the episode, you mentioned that, well, you, you asked the audience um, what they're already using. And we had a couple of people who wrote back to say that they're not using anything yet. So right. would you describe this webinar kind of, if you follow it from start to finish, that would be a good roadmap to kind of start using these things? Or is there somewhere in particular you would recommend that they begin? Um, you know, I actually believe that this is a pretty good roadmap for how to go about using various tools um, again, from like a sourcing and, and an engagement perspective. Um, and I, I would really encourage you to explore those free tools first before investing in something further like the AI automated um, sourcing tools and whatnot. But a lot of these tools that I shared, they all offer free trials. And guys, like <laughs> free trials, um, why not say yes to that? And <laughs> Additionally, I have some really good connections with several of several of the reps at various tool companies that I mentioned. Um, so if you'd like me to introduce you to them, I would be more than happy to do that. Perfect. OK, um, we have a question that just came in. It doesn't have a lot of context. Uh, what about sources who code to learn sourcing? Um, I'm, uh, Michael, I'm hoping you can give us a bit more context um, as to what exactly you want to know about sources who code to learn sourcing, unless Susanna, yeah. do you know what he means? Um, I mean, I I can I can try. <laughs> um, so sourcers who code originally, like as I mentioned, I I've hosted as well as won quite a few sourcing hackathons, and my learning I felt was a bit capped out. Um, so I wanted to create a group of individuals that again had kind of capped out on their own sourcing and their own learning um so i felt like the next evolution was for sourcers to actually learn how to code a bit meaning how to get systems to talk to each other or even code your own solutions um so with that being said i still don't know how to code <laughs> <laughs> but I have surrounded myself now with unbelievably intelligent, like-minded sourcers. Um, so that that one group has really become a honey hole of information and a great resource for me. Um, and I have friends that are now coding solutions for me and enjoy the, t the challenge so that I don't have to take the time to learn. Um, so <laughs> again, even if you don't code, but you're just interested in innovative solutions and want a uh, a good sounding board of non-judgmental individuals, uh, then I definitely encourage you to join us. Wow, I feel like this is the scoop of the century, like breaking news, Susanna Marie does not know how to code. <laughs> you got to read it here first, folks. <laughs> <laughs> no, again, I, I'm pretty honest about things, um, but no, time won't let me yet. <laughs> <laughs> Well, you know, that's uh, all the questions that I've got on my channel. I don't know if you have any that are coming in on yours, Susanna. Yeah, no, I believe that I've already addressed those that have come through. Um, so no, I, I really appreciate everybody's time. And again, I am very open and honest and more than willing to chat with individuals outside of this webinar. So feel free to contact me directly using some of the techniques that I shared. Fantastic. I hope that people do reach out to you and especially if they do have uh, more in-depth questions that they would like to get your expertise on. Um, thank you so much for joining us. It's been a real pleasure to talk to you today. Thank you. Always a pleasure, Shelley. Really appreciate your time, y'all. Have a great day. Thank Bye. you. Bye-bye.